Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again with another LaunchBox tutorial. Today we're going to be covering the Sharp X1, also referred to as the X1 or the CZ800C. Now this was a home computer system released in Japan in 1982 that was powered by a Z80A CPU at 4 megahertz with 64 kilobytes of RAM. Now this system is a little obscure, but I personally love these obscure Japanese PCs and I really do think that this is definitely worth adding to your launch box collection. To emulate the X1 with our PC, we're actually going to be using RetroArch and a core called X1 Millennium, otherwise known as X1 underscore LibRetro. But before we get started, there are a few things you're going to need, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. Alright, so obviously, in order for all this to work correctly, we will need some Sharp X1 games. I have some in a folder on my desktop called Sharp X1, and inside of here I have about 100 games. There are two formats that I mainly use, but the emulator will support more, and if you want to leave them zip, you can always do that. I have .2D and .d88 files. Like I mentioned, there are other formats, but I mainly deal with .2D and .d88. The next thing you might want to add, but it's not totally necessary, are the BIOSes for the X1 Turbo, IPLROM.X1T and IPLROM.X1. These are not necessary, but if you do want to play the X1 Turbo games, you will need these. Now it's time to get the X1 core downloaded inside of RetroArch. I'm going to go ahead and locate my LaunchBox folder. Inside of here, I have an emulators folder. And inside of here, we have RetroArch. Yours might be in a different location, but this is how I have mine set up. We're going to go into the RetroArch folder. And the very first thing I recommend if you're using the Turbo BIOSes is go to your system folder and just put these right in here. I'm just going to replace the files because they were already there. Now we're going to back up and launch RetroArch so we can get that core downloaded. RetroArch.exe And from within RetroArch, we're going to navigate to Online Updater, Core Updater, and we're going to find the Sharp X1 emulator known as X1 Millennium. We're going to go ahead and download this. The core is now installed. We can actually exit. So we've got our games, we have the core downloaded, we have our BIOSes in place. So now it's time to start up LaunchBox, and from here we're going to configure our RetroArch emulator. So we're going to use the drop-down menu, Tools, Manage Emulators. We're going to find RetroArch, and if you don't already have RetroArch set up with LaunchBox and BigBox, I will leave a full tutorial in the description. We're going to edit, Associated Platforms, and we're going to go all the way down to the bottom here, and we're going to add Sharp X1, and from the drop-down, we're going to find that X1.LibRetro Core. We're going to make sure our default emulator is checked and choose OK. So now LaunchBox knows that we want to play our X1 games with the RetroArch emulator. And speaking of the games, it's now time to start the import. From the drop down, we're going to go back to Tools, Import, ROM Files. We'll choose Next. I'm going to go ahead and choose Add Folder, and I'm just going to add that folder that's on my desktop with all of my Sharp X1 games. So I'll go to my desktop. Sharp X1, choose OK, and Next. Platform for imported games, we're going to choose Sharp X1 from the drop down menu. Choose Next. RetroArch should be the default core, but if it's not, you can use the drop down menu. And I'm going to choose the first option here to copy the files into my LaunchBox games folder because they're on my desktop. If you already have them in your LaunchBox folder, there's no need to do this. Search for game information from the LaunchBox Games database. I want to download as much media as possible. We don't need to specify any custom options for X1. We'll choose Next. And here we have it. The name of the game, the location, and the extension. Like I mentioned, I'm using .2D and .D88 files. Choose Finish. LaunchBox is now going to download all of our metadata, images, and import the games for us. So all of my games were imported successfully. I'll choose OK. And you can actually start playing right now, but there are a few little settings that I'd like to show you to improve performance on a majority of these games. I'm going to go ahead and start one up. We'll do Dragon Buster. Remember, we're using RetroArch here. So as soon as the game loads up here, 
I'm actually going to go to my quick menu inside of RetroArch. You can do that from F1 on the keyboard, or if you're using an Xbox controller, you can press your Xbox button. We're now in the quick menu for this specific game and emulator. We're going to scroll down to Options, and as you can see, there's a few settings to mess around with. For resolution, I usually set it to high. Boot media, 2 HD. ROM type, I'm going to leave it X1. If you know it's a turbo game, go with turbo or turbo Z. For FPS, I do want these to run at 60, so I'm going to make sure that 60 is chosen here. And the last option that I change here for a majority of the games is the CPU clock speed. Stock clock will be at 4 but I usually go to 6 just to eliminate any kind of lag or any kind of flashing going on, especially with your character sprite. So we're going to back up. We're still in the quick menu. Resume game. And we can start playing with the controller right now. So it really depends on how you have your controller set up. I'm using an Xbox controller. My D-pad is used for movement in 99% of these games. B on my Xbox controller is one of my game buttons and A is my other game button. Let's see if I can get him out of here. And you can exit by pressing escape or if you have controller automation set up, start and select. It'll bring us into the pause menu. You can exit the game from here. So yeah, that's pretty much it for getting X1 up and running with the launch box. We really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.